so as we get to this time of year, there's a real stigma around certain animals. We're myth-busting Halloween this year. What is it about bats in particular that people find so scary, do you think? I think it's probably mostly to do with the dark, that they come out in the dark. If you think about the animals that we are frightened of in this country mostly, it's mostly things to do with darkness and dark spaces and those kinds of things. Because after all, we haven't got great big animals that are likely to eat you whole. So we have seem to be frightened of creepy crawlies, really. It's not just bats either. Uh, spiders and black cats get a bad rep around this time of year. Is there any sort of natural basis to it all? Uh, no, I mean, well, obviously black cats are harmless. Mostly they're people's pets. Spiders in this country are entirely harmless, in spite of what the Daily Express says every year. It's mostly just superstitious nonsense. Bats aren't going to come anywhere near you. So much mythology about a set of animals that are associated with darkness, I think. And thinking about bats in particular, what do they actually do for us and for the environment around us? Well, I mean, there's one thing is that they're interesting and beautiful. And if you ever get up close to one, they're actually unbelievably cute. But I suppose the main service that we might think of them as doing for us is eating insects. They eat huge quantities of insects. That's what all their food is. They just fly about through the night hoovering up insects. And one of the critical things that's starting to affect them is the loss of insects. We are going through a sort of invertebrate apocalypse at the moment. How can people make a difference? Is there something that we can do to to help? People can actually start to take it seriously and say, hold on a minute, this is going to be a disaster because it will be a disaster. If you lose pollinating invertebrates then the costs of that are massive because all your food all the food that needs to be pollinated by insects requires insects to pollinate it the practical one is probably for most people about things like gardens window boxes and so on nest boxes for things like blue tits because they insects and then not using chemicals in your garden making sure you've got lots of attractive plants that provide nectar for insects having things like little ponds because ponds don't need to be big having things like compost heaps and trying as hard as possible to stay away from the chemical compounds so later in this show we're going to be talking to dr jenny josephs about uh, eating insects and also catching up with andrew from this year's great british bake-off if we could convince andrew to bake a cake with some of jenny's bugs in it would you eat it uh, yes, I'm, I'm afraid famous amongst my friends for eating anything. <laughs> that's what it is, I will eat it. So I, I would be lying if I said, oh no, I wouldn't, wouldn't dream of eating that. I'm afraid I'll eat almost anything. Great, well thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh no, no trouble. <laughs> 